Hello and welcome to Bad Hasbara, the world's most moral podcast. How are you? I'm I'm bad. Uh, my name is Matt Lieb. I'll be your most moral host for this evening or afternoon, whenever you're listening to this. It's recorded. Who knows? One day we'll do a live stream and, uh, you know, on that day, you guys will enjoy that because apparently people like live streams. I don't know why. I watch a live stream sometimes, uh, and these are people who I, I like, like Hassan. Great live stream. It's mostly silence. But anyways, uh, it's it's a great, I do love that live stream. Not talking shit. Come on the pod, Hassan. Uh, please, give us five stars and a review on uh, and uh, on a, all the, uh, you know, Apple Store, the podcast store, Spotify, whatever. Just like go there and be like, hey, this is a good podcast, five stars, because then people will find out about it. Uh, and then, um, you know, we, we will be happy. Make me happy. That'd be nice. Um, also, if you want to support this podcast, patreon.com slash badhasbara. Uh, also, you know, if you're like, that's too many letters, go to badhasbara.com. That's right. We bought a domain. And what is it? It's basically a link tree. It just goes to like Spotify and YouTube and Patreon. So uh, easier to remember if you're someone who can't remember to go to patreon.com slash badhasbara. Okay. Today, I'm joined once again by my great and powerful co-host, sometimes co-host, hopefully more and more co-host. You know him, you love him. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone else, welcome back, Daniel Mate. Shooby doo scooby doo ba ba da it's jet ba- excuse me, I fucked that up. It's bad jazz bar <laughs> oh, that was Fuck. beautiful. Fuck, god damn it. I just, <laughs> just get a few syllables, get it out there. I love it. <laughs> Such a stupid joke. It's a great joke, and it's even funnier when you fuck it up. That's yeah. my opinion. I, you know, I enjoy watching bloopers. I'm a bloopers guy. <laughs> well, I'm it's like, all bloopers with me. I, I, I like. I'm, I'm happy to hear about this badhasbara.com, and I'm glad that there's a link tree. It, it reminds me of like when we used to, you know, back in my Hebrew school days, go along, go around collecting, uh, you know, tzedakah money. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the the Jewish National Fund, aka <laughs> the incremental theft uh, uh, yeah, society. This, right. But to to plant a tree in Israel. So if you come to badhasbara.com, you're like almost, you're planting a, a link tree in oh. in, in, <laughs> That's right. in, in in the nation state of uh, of Bad Hasbara. That's right. Please yeah. come plant a link tree. And, uh, you know, help donate. Donate. That should be a Patreon tier, by the way. <laughs> it's like for $20 a month, you get to plant a tree at uh, my the my in my front yard. My <laughs> landlord won't be happy, but, uh, you know. The, uh, you can, you can get up. me a, yeah, or, or, or speaking of suck it up, you can get me a succulent. Oh, yeah. Succulent's you know, like, great. Just, then I don't on have my, to On my it. windowsill. Exactly. Yes. We have exactly. a house full of succulents. It is, uh, you know, that's not a that's not a nice thing to call your baby. Yeah, I mean, she's the most sucky succulent. She just <laughs> all she does is suck. Um, Daniel, I'm so happy that you're back. Um, I am excited for this episode because uh, you recently um, put out a video that I thought was fucking amazing, and I want to get into mm. that today. Um, and uh, but first. We got to talk about Hasbara. We got to talk about our favorite subject here, bad Hasbara. Mm. Um, And in order to get into that, I want to talk about uh, what happened this week with our most moral friend of the pod and boy who once fought off two burglars by booby trapping his home with Christmas ornaments, Owen (laughs) Jones. (laughs) Uh, Owen Jones, great man, looks a little bit like Macaulay Culkin. He admits it. It's all good. And who am I to talk? I look like Daniel Stern. <laughs> uh, but uh, Owen Jones recently went on the BBC, um, which is a British channel. <laughs> I'm an idiot. He went on the BBC and uh, he went on uh, one of the various news programs they have. They have uh, so many news programs. It's too many, honestly. And it's just all news programs. over there. And, the, and worse, worse than that, it's all programs MME. 
Yeah. S, you know? Yeah, that's, that's right. That's how they spell it over there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, here's the other thing. The, BBC One, BBC Two, BBC Three, BBC Four. I don't know the difference of these. In America, all of our channels have different names, like Fuse and uh, NBC. You know what I mean? Yeah, they may be all owned by the same mega corporation, sure. but at least they did, at least they diversify the branding over exactly. there. Exactly. BBC One, BBC mm -hmm. Bloke, BBC In It, BBC yeah. <laughs> BBC Bread Pie, BBC Fish, <laughs> BBC Chips. I mean, come on, guys. Do better. That's what I say. Um, but yeah, Owen Jones went on and uh, he had a, um, a a little debate with uh, someone who is going to be the main Hasbarista of this episode, uh, Hen Mazig. And I'm gonna I'm gonna play a little bit of this. This is from about three or four days ago. So here's Owen Jones and Hen Mazig. All the way through this has been raising civilian infrastructure to the ground. It has conducted the biggest killing of aid workers in recorded history. And the point I would make, Israeli leaders and officials were very clear from the very beginning about what they were going to do. They didn't hide it. You don't have to go through leaked documents. You just have to listen to, for example, to Yov Gallant, the defence minister, who's in the war cabinet of three, who said that they were going to cut off food, water, and all the essentials of life on the grounds they were fighting human animals. And then, on the 9th of October, he declared he was lifting all restraints on soldiers, and a day later he said he was lifting all restrictions on Israeli soldiers. We've now seen that, and the impunity that Israel enjoys from the West has led to aid workers who shared their coordinates on a pre-approved route with massive World Central Kitchen logos who were chased from car to car with the drone until every single one was dead. You're saying that 7 million tonnes of food today did not enter Gaza? Israel is lying can, about that? I can that? answer that question very clearly. Um, Israel has destroyed much of Gaza's domestic food production and agriculture. Yeah. The amount of food aid, as David Cameron has noted, is much less than before the 7th of October, when the need is much greater. And not only that, the roads have been trashed, OK, for a start. Police officers, which guard those trucks, have been deliberately targeted by Israel, with Joe Biden's own administration condemning Benjamin Netanyahu uh, for doing that. Whether it comes to the infrastructure, get, or, for example, the, the ability to transport the aid around is impossible now. Right. So I mean, this I mean, is why to, the, the destruction a, of agriculture plus the, the, the inability to I get mean, the food. Because you, yeah. you, you throw um, a lot of hand. No, and, and, and you know what? I, I do understand why this conflict raises a lot of emotions. I think we need to focus on reality. Uh, and I understand, especially when you are Jewish or Palestinian or Arab, why you feel so commit, so connected to this conflict. Oh, here it comes. Uh, and, and really being hurt and upset. I'm upset. My family, my friends. I lost friends in October 7th. Um, mm. I don't understand why you are so. Uh, because I object to genocide. About that. Because I'm a human being. <laughs> And of course, it's not a genocide. Because I'm a human being. That's would why. You... All right, a couple of things. Yes. Number one, just uh, just uh, this is just a little nerdy point. Yes. The word ra the the word raising is one of these words that always catches my ear because if you spell it one way, it means one thing, and if you spell it another way, it means the exact opposite. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just one of those words that we should. Hey, what are we doing here with this homophone? Let's just. Yeah. Uh, and I don't yeah. want to be like homophonic. Homo <laughs> Homo homophonophobic. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to be homophonophobic, but I'm just there's saying. Other, like, there's other words that even if you spell them the exact same way, they can mean the opposite. Sanction is one. Oh. You notice that? We sanction this, we meaning oh, we give it totally permission. Oh, right. Yeah. We sanction, we condemn it. Um, oh. What are some other ones? Well, resign and resign mm, uh, would yeah. be the exact opposite. Anyway, that's totally... In can you rewind back to when Hen is listening to Owen? <laughs> yes. This is one of my favorite things to do. When I was watching this, uh, I and just enjoyed watching Hen's face. Yeah. Uh, because he is he is All the way clearly this freaking out. Has been raising So, you know, he's this Not is quite yet. Was... It's when he opens his mouth. Oh, he I mean he he does this a few yeah, times. Yeah, there right right here, right here. This and look. all the essentials of life on the grounds they were fighting human animals. And then on the 9th of October, he declared he was lifting yeah, all okay, the Yeah, okay, so what this looks like to me, what this <laughs> looks like to me is like a, a kid at, at like a, a fancy restaurant that his parents took him to. <laughs> like, and, and, they, and there's like an open kitchen and they can see the chef preparing a special birthday dessert for him. And he's like, I like, the, I, this is going to be so special. This is exactly what I want. And then he realizes... Wait a minute. Is that chef 
putting peanuts in that cake. I'm allergic <laughs> to peanuts. Why are my parents trying to kill me? Hey, what the hell? <laughs> well, Mom, Dad, is, I thought you loved me. Is, the, is that a dog shit souffle he's preparing? <laughs> he has a look of someone who uh, honestly has not been in this position in a little while. I feel like yeah. Ken Mazik is someone who... Um, you know, and we'll we'll get into this. Has been someone who has been the go-to guy for your you know kind of bad faith identity politics based arguments regarding uh, Israel's war crimes, um, and he has been fairly successful at it because of the fact that uh, you know most of the time when Israel is doing these war crimes uh, in these you know like shiny named operation you know protective edge and whatnot, they're <laughs> happening out of the light of day for the most part. The people who are interested in the subject know about it. The general operations, public does not. These also are operations all sound like condom brands. They, yes, they do. Protective <laughs> edge, protective cast edge. lead. <laughs> That's true. Pillar protective, of defense. Protective edge is when you're edging, but you want to make sure you don't get spill everything everywhere. We, you know all, know I mean? about, we all know about pre-cum folks. They yes, teach we you understand. That. We know what his, glands make it. That's um, right. But uh, yeah, Hen in this uh, does have a very much uh, deer uh, in the headlights look. Um, and he ends that what I think is very uh, eloquently stated um, argument by Owen Jones with his patented, but why do you care about this That's response? Right. This identity politics based response in which, like, I can understand how Jews care about this or Palestinians or Arabs. Um, yeah, what he's what he's really saying is, you know, I just really wish there was a Palestinian sitting in front of me right now. I just wish I could debate yes. this with someone who cares about it as much as I do. Like, yeah, that's how yeah, we really yeah, feel. Yeah. There's one yeah. thing I love. It's it's uh, <laughs> when Palestinians and I are doing civil discourse, um, <laughs> which is a point that I will also talk about. Um, so uh, he is sitting there trying to say you know like this is how is this any of your business and owen just responds perfectly with this idea of you know like hey you know because i'm a human being and i care about genocide and uh it's beautiful to watch and for a lot of people watching they may be asking themselves who the fuck is this guy uh so today we're going to be talking about uh hen mazig so hen mazig is a uh he is a singer, songwriter, musician, and founder really? of the rock, rock band The Misfits. Sam Hain and Dan. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the bio for Glenn Danzig. <laughs> That's my bad. My bad. Uh, shit. I made this for nothing. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I, only know I, I knew that song originally because Metallica covered it. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Metallica, also a great band that Hen Mazig is not in. Um, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> Hen Metalizig. Is, Metalizig. Um, Hen uh, Mazig is a Mizrahi Jewish uh, concern troll, paid concern troll. Um, his entire persona is uh, based on Western liberal sentiments that worked well with the college crowd in like 2014. Mm -hmm. um, he's a gay Jew of color who recycles or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to give you an example of what his brand is, I'm going to read a little bit of uh, an article that he had uh, in the forward. Um, and it's an article called, I'm a gay Jew of color who supports Israel. The left hates me. This so sounds like that fucking CIA uh, <laughs> advertisement. I'm a yes. I'm a non-binary neurodivergent woman of color <laughs> yes. who uh, who gets depressed sometimes <laughs> right. and yeah exactly and doesn't like yeah. uh, Fiona Apple as much as the people right. at my high school did. <laughs> and I believe I, we should lean in to regime change <laughs> in Syria. Unapolo um, and I am unapolo I'm unapologetic about anything. I am or America has ever done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think Guatemalans can't rule themselves. Um, <laughs> so that's my lived experience. Yes, uh, that is my truth. Um, 
Yes. Uh, so he wrote this article, and I'll read some of it right now. I'm a gay Jew of color who supports Israel. Um, <clears throat> I'm a gay Mizrahi Jew who supports Israel, and the left hates me. It's ironic. I am the embodiment of intersectionality. I am the, I am the son of an Iraqi mother and North African Berber Amazigh father. I grew up uh, in an uh, underprivileged community, a gay boy in the closet who then became an openly gay man. I identify Now that's a now that's a story arc. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I identify as Jewish but secular. Um and yes, that is quite th that is a nice narrative. You know what I mean? Once you were a gay boy, now you are a gay man. But, but uh, I mean, look, no, no, no. I mean, yeah. I think a more interesting story arc would be a gay boy in the closet who became like a raging heterosexual. Yeah, yeah. That, That's that to me I is, is a seen before. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, I want to see something how, new. <laughs> and I don't mean like a closeted heterosexual. I mean like a full blooded like. Oh yeah, like straight guy, super like men, straight, like, like men's rights organization yes, incel, activist. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he goes on to say, you'd think as a Jew of color who's gay and from an underprivileged background, yes, we, you stated this, the left would be a natural fit. And yet- any, any article that contains a sentence starting with, you'd think. Yeah, yeah, you'd think. Yeah, it's usually <laughs> something I wouldn't think. Um, <laughs> That's right. Uh, but in this case, it's like, uh, okay, uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, uh, yeah, the left would be a natural fit. And yet from the point of view of the American- Jewish and Israeli left one cardinal sin keeps me from their ranks and he's talking about his love of Israel. Um, okay, but that's not a hold on. That's not a cardinal sin that keeps you from their ranks. Yeah. That no, if you no. if there was a cardinal sin that kept you from their ranks, the implication would be you really want to join their ranks. Yeah. But you did the, you did this thing and they're being all judgy about it. Right, exactly. The, exactly. The cardinal sin that keeps you from their ranks <laughs> is that you by definition are not a leftist. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yes, which is, I think, you know, bare minimum of being on the left is ha having left values. Fucking um, gatekeepers, man. Keeping all these non-leftists out of the left. Listen, I'm trying to make the left a wide tent. I'm trying to let people in there who, of course, you know, who hate occupation. I'm trying to the people who love occupation. I'm trying to get people who are just like, hey, what if we all just go to Dave and Buster's and do a hate crime? Like, if everyone's here then we will get the thing that we want, which is the status quo. Yeah, I um, think it's important for a movement that your left hand does not know what your right wing is doing. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, so he continues uh, and, you know, bumps up his, his cred as what, you know, he should be a leftist or, or accepted by the left because of certain things, not just his identity, but also his humanitarian work. Um, it's amazing that the American Jewish uh, leaders, um, uh, oh, oh, so I'm going to start with this first, sorry. Uh, it's amazing that American Jewish leaders of the left participate in smearing me as a Hezbarist, while out of the other side of their mouths extolling the virtues of intersectionality. Many American Jewish liberals would like me to criticize Israel more because that is what a, quote, good progressive does, bash Israel. Well, first of all, he misspelled Hezbarist. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, bro. Let, it's not Hasbaraist. That's totally. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's ridiculous. A, a, um, bar, as, ha, a Hasbaraist mm -hmm. is someone who loves the bad Hasbara podcast. That's right. If you are a Hasbaraist, you better make sure to like and subscribe, <laughs> motherfuckers. Be the most moral. Um, Otherwise, your ist, your ismness, your istness mm -hmm. is in question. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, he says, you know, at the start of that, it's amazing that they smear me as a Hasbaraist. Um, and I, I agree, it is amazing that he is smeared. Uh, but, you know, because it's much more complex than that. And that, uh, according to an article in the forward, um, it could be legally argued that he was a secret agent. Um, so this is from the uh, 2018 article by Aiden Pink in the forward. Quote, uh, it's uh, called, uh, did Hen Mazig work as a secret agent on campuses? So um, here's a little bit from that. 
in this article, uh, Mazig admits he was a paid contractor for the government of Israel. He says that the official uh, government advertising agency hired him to inform them about issues on college campuses, but he insists that the government never told him to do anything or, or paid him for anything other than his advice, which was based on information and insights he gathered during his time on American campuses. They never told him to do anything except inform them about <laughs> what he yeah. saw on campuses. Yeah. Uh, and it's also uh, pretty questionable as to the idea that they never told him to do anything, being that the fact that he is on American campuses uh, spreading propaganda is literally what they want him to do. They right. never told me to do the thing. I just was this, doing yeah. it for money on my own. <laughs> this is not some away mission that some lowly ensign gets on Star yes. Trek The Next Generation. Yeah, you know, go to this planet and... Tell yeah. us something about that. We know nothing about it. We haven't done an extreme reconnaissance and yeah. we don't have specific groups you want me to, we want you to infiltrate and target. Yes. Just figure it out. Say whatever. <laughs> um, Some general notes will suffice. We'll put it <laughs> yes. away in a file. Uh, and this article went deep because they were able to get uh, some uh, financial documents that supported uh, all of their claims. So I'll continue. Oh. Um uh, he he continues, the consulting that I gave the uh, government was about fighting anti-Semitism, he said in a phone interview. Uh, I gave information about being attacked uh, for being LGBT, uh, being Jew, uh, being a Jew of color, that gives me an understanding of how to combat anti-Semitism, racism, and LGBT phobia. And that was the consulting I gave to the agency. Um, the documents acquired by the forward, which have never before been made public, detail not just the total payments ordered, but also breaks them down into to individual deposits. It shows Mazig was paid by the Israeli government's ad agency known as uh, LAPAM, LAPAM, uh, which transliterates a Hebrew acronym. However, the deposits were requested by another entity, which was listed as Prime Minister's Office, MLS, uh, and the MLS is uh, the Ministry of Strategic Ma Affairs. Major League, it's Major, it's major league <laughs> Soccer. It's Major League Soccer, and it's the Ministry it, of Strategic they're Affairs. They're just... They're <laughs> They're just, they're just kicking a ball around, Matt. They're just What's kicking, called? just kicking a ball. Le That's all. Leave, leave him around. Leave, leave him alone. <laughs> leave him alone. He's just trying to do a little footy with the homies. That's right. Um, so uh, the, if you don't know, the Mis Ministry of Strategic Affairs is the Israeli government's primary body tasked with fighting the BDS campaign against uh, the Jewish state. Its actions, including creating an official blacklist banning Jewish supporters of BDS from entering Israel, have been controversial in some American Jewish communities. Uh, and according to the Israeli magazine, magazine The Seventh Eye, uh, reported uh, that the ministry was working with hawkish American charities on a project uh, in which the forward wrote last month, quote, appears to be an effort by Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs, at least in part, to fund anti-BDS uh, activities outside of Israel that won't be attributable to the government itself. Hmm. So in this article, it goes on to talk about how a lot of uh, what hen was doing is very legally iffy in terms of whether or not it would count as uh being an unregistered foreign agent uh for a foreign government uh which he fucking definitely was uh yeah. in that he is i mean the uh financial documents that they got in the forward um that the forward uh, you know exposed show him being paid literally by the Ministry of Strategic Affairs. So but only but only to sit on the couch and like emote about what it's like to be uh targeted as an LGBT Jew of color. Like Right, exactly. Exactly. They were, they, they were just paying him for his you know sort of confessional right uh processing his catharsis. Yes. You know, sometimes you know you 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 give a token, you get a token, you know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this token is valid for. No, but yeah. I mean th another questionable sentence in there is uh you know, they asked me about my experience of being attacked for these identity things which makes me an authority on how to combat anti-Semitism right. and LGBT. That does not follow. No, that does just not follow just at all. Just cuz you're just cuz you're the victim of something yeah. doesn't mean that you're paid you're 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 like reliable to consult anyone on how right. to get rid of that thing right i mean you know if anything you're not <laughs> because you keep getting attacked for it yeah um, i mean but i mean there are exceptions my grandparents no, of course, of were, course. Were, 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 were definitely hired by a german consulting firm for you know advice on uh how to uh 
combat anti-Semitism uh, mm-hmm. by virtue of the fact that they lived through the Second World War. Yeah. No, I mean, it's not it's not to say that, you know, he necessarily couldn't, <clears throat> um, but it's to say that the idea that he would be an authority on this is a little iffy, especially regarding the fact that he is not going on to these college campuses talking about, like, how to stop uh, homophobia or right. uh, how to be, you know, uh, an anti-racist. He's going on there uh, on college campuses to um, basically he was an agent provocateur a lot of the times. I mean, he was yeah. he was doing uh, things in order to um, enrage the Palestinian solidarity organizations on campuses mm. um, and in order to try and, um, you know, spread propaganda for the state of Israel as, you know, the token, but see, I'm I'm gay and a Jew of color and therefore can't be racist, which is, yeah. I think, the entire point of him cynically co-opting this language. I think that that form of provocation is called making people feel henpecked. <laughs> yes. And I there's mean, your episode title right there. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Henpecked. Henpecked, yeah. Yeah. Um, Finally, uh, when uh, Mazig was interviewed on the phone by the forward on October 11th, uh, this was back in, I believe, 2018, um, he said that the payments were for consulting work he had done, uh, you know, uh, (laughs) but he said for consulting work he had done for the ministry. No, no, not the ministry, the agency. This was uh, maybe this was a misstep by someone speaking in a non-native tongue, uh, but uh, maybe it's not. Um, It is it is. almost irrefutable that he is an actual Hezbollah. So the the idea that he's writing this article in the forward where he's just like, I can't believe the left is smearing me as a, as a an agent of propaganda. You are literally doing that and not in a way where it's like, you know, you're fucking doing it out of the goodness of your heart. You are paid to do this. Mm-hmm. This is your job. And whether or not it was the ministry or the agency, I'd like to think he was working for the, the American uh, industrial band ministry but uh but whether (laughs) remember them but uh the mind is a terrible thing to taste uh Mm -hmm. but um but either way it is a ministry it's a religious ministry you're Mm -hmm. ministering to the flock and you're trying to you know you're trying to cast out the evildoers and that's right you're 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 a minister in a cult absolutely um to get back to hen's article yeah um, yeah yeah sorry i keep taking us away no, 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 not at all. Uh, Into silly pop culture references and other. I love silly pop entities. Okay, listen, fine. dude. The whole point of this podcast is to some. Are you going to fire me? You can, please don't ever leave. <laughs> I love you too much to <laughs> fire you. If anything, you fire me. I'm a cuck. Um. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so. I was going through his article and I found uh, another claim that he made um, that I, m- I mentioned previously early, uh, earlier about his humanitarian efforts and how oh. he can't believe the left doesn't love him because he's such a humanitarian. And um, to read from his article, uh, and this makes me intolerable to the left, despite the fact that I worked for several years promoting Palestinian human rights and despite mm, the fact that I am critical of the current right-wing uh, government of uh, in Israel and support a two-state solution, despite the fact that I believe we should be working to find a permanent status for asylum seekers and op- oppose their deportation. When you ask some prominent uh, left-wing activists in North America about me, they will call me a right-wing Hasbara uh, and uh, activist and fake progressive. Um, I don't care if you're a right-wing Hasbara activist or a left-wing Hasbara activist. It doesn't matter at this point. Hasbara yeah, you can be, is not about left or right anymore. No, no. This is a, it is a bipartisan fuckery. I think we can all agree with that. Yeah. Um, well, it's unipartisan because the what, right. what he thinks is left in Israel right. has just joined the center right. Exactly. Um, and the Israeli left has moved to Berlin. <laughs> That's why exactly the fuck right. Why would you stay there? Um, well, it's the it's the historical journey of 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 Jews from the Middle East, I know. being persecuted by a fascist regime and seeking refuge in their true homeland, which is yeah. uh, Deutschland. <laughs> it was just Deutschland, Deutschland. Uh, so Juber Alice. Yes. Well, you know, not Uber, but like just you know. Everyone's... I said ju- I said Juber. Oh fuck, that's a good pun too. Um, not real. So he talked about his leftist credentials here. I mean, he's 
worked for Palestinian human rights. He's a humanitarian. So what is he talking about? Yeah, what do you do? Yeah. Um, so I was trying to find what he did. And I came upon a TEDx talk that he gave a decade ago. Oh, exciting. And remember the days of TED talks? I, I remember TED, man. We, yeah. we would just watch those and be like, oh, man, I'm going to. I'm going to do something with my life now. Oh, man, that was pithy and not very insightful, but yeah. oh, easy to share. Wow, that was long. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so I I found this uh, TEDx talk that he did, uh, and this is the pro-Palestinian activism that he is talking about. <laughs> Here we go. ...to join the Kogat unit. The Kogat oh, unit is the humanitarian unit of the Israeli Defense Force. It's the unit that takes care of the Palestinian civilians. As we understand, there's many Palestinians that have nothing to do with the conflict, that they want to live their life. And the job of my unit is to help them. And I served in the West Bank, I served in Hebron, in Jerusalem, and in Ramallah. Um, I saved the life of thousands of Palestinians. And every time I did something like that, From I what? can't tell you From how, whom? how amazing it feels. I, how amazing <laughs> it feels to save the life of... You know what he did? Yeah. He walked into the room where they were like, we're going to bomb... 3,000 Palestinians. And he's like, guys, 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 no, don't do it. Yeah. Please, please, please ramp the number down. And they said, okay, only 1,500. And okay, he saved he the life of 1,500 Palestinians. So many, you know, it's like he's a, he's a regular Oscar Schindler here, you know? He's, uh... Israelis, Israelis are obsessed with their unit. You ever notice this? When Israelis yeah. talk about their service, we had, a, there was this running joke when uh, back in my Zionist summer camp days, we uh -huh. had this particular counselor named uh, Nir, I think his name was. And he was out on Tiul, which is the Israeli word for like hike or overnight camping mm -hmm. trip with uh, one group. And uh, kids were complaining about um, flies and mosquitoes. And he says, excuse me, I'm sorry, but in my, when I was in the army, in my unit, um, we had flies as big as how you say helicopters. But they're just like, their unit is such a point of like pride. I guess that's what happens in armies. Like you, you bond I mean, with your boys. And I, I, was, uh, I was talking to someone uh, who was an, an Israeli expat um, a couple months ago. And uh, hopefully I will have them on the show uh, soon. But someone who was a, a refuser did not join the IDF and uh, eventually you know, left uh, Israel. And was talking about just how important unit placement is, in, mm. not just in like terms of regular, you know, like uh, bragging rights in Israeli society, but like in high school bragging rights. Like a high school will, uh, t they talk about how many students got into this unit or that unit or officers, how many officers came out of their high school. The way we talk about like, oh, this school is really good for people who want to go to an Ivy League. Um, it is... Uh, you know, so units are very important, you know? I mean, listen, I like my unit, you know? <laughs> These days, Kovat's, well, Co Kogat's main job is tweeting. They've got a really active uh, Twitter account. Yes. It's and that's some Twitter, wild stuff. Oh, yeah. That Twitter account, by the way, started by uh, Sarah Silverman's niece, I believe. And oh. yeah, that's a lot of fun. But hey, you know, she started the social media account. Doesn't mean she started Kogat. So his... Pro-Palestinian activism, his humanitarian work, uh, is with uh, COGAT, which is the Coordination of Government Activities in the Territories. Ah. They are... Which territory? The, the what territories? How would you describe those territories if you had to choose an adjective, a descriptor? I will t I'll tell you how they describe them <laughs> on their Twitter bio. Uh, the territories Disputed? of uh, Judea and Samaria. Oh, those territories. Yes. Uh, yeah. AKA the West Bank. Uh, and uh, in, and the Gaza Strip, which they still graciously I'm, call the I, Gaza I'm Strip. Just, I just can't get this question. I'm like, what's what's the legal status of those territories? You know? Uh, yeah, I mean... Are they Israeli territories? I mean, who knows, man? You know? Like, what passports do the people in those territories carry? And uh, You know, li yeah. listen. Who knows, Sm really? Someone knows. Uh, the, the point is, is it's, it's anti-Semitic for you to ask that, Daniel. Yeah, I uh, think there's a unit whose job it is to know that and keep that, guard that knowledge. Yeah, like uh, guard it like a prison guard, <laughs> which is essentially what Kogat is. Uh, now, this is from the uh, from a 
interview that was given um, on Al Jazeera explaining what COGAT is and what they control. Here we go. COGAT, and how does it work? Right. I mean, COGAT sounds civilian, but as you already said, is a unit in the Ministry of Defense. It's staffed by military officers and it's an executive body of the IDF to actually implement occupation. It Executed implements in military strategy, so it's not a civilian body. It's in many ways when it comes to Gaza that the prison gatekeeper, because it kind of keeps the gates and controls the most important choke, choke points for aid, uh, for people, for capital, for any sort of flows going in and out of Gaza. Yeah, so they uh, are essentially, first of all, they are a military unit. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, not a civilian humanitarian aid NGO that like coordinates efforts with the government in order, you know, as a third party to, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, these two governments are talking to. No, it is the, they are the, the most IOF of IOF. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. when people call... Uh, all Israeli soldiers, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, the Israeli occupying forces as rather than the Israeli defense forces, n like they're almost quite literally the IOF in yeah. every sense. They are the occupying force within the occupied territories and surrounding Gaza and are responsible for, I mean, like if the, you, the, the general managers of the occupation. Yes, 100%. Um, so... To call that my humanitarian efforts or whatnot, you know, to be like, you know, I I did some Palestinian solidarity work as a member of COGAT is like fucking insane. It's mm -hmm. a crazy, crazy thing to say. Um, so, yeah, after being a member of uh, Israel's uh, forces in the occupied West Bank, Mazik became a representative of the, of the Israeli government funded lobby group Stand With Us. Uh, uh, yes. In that capacity, he has taken part in lecture tours given by Israeli soldiers. Uh, according to the website Stand With Us, such tours allow those in the attendance to ask tough questions. Um, more recently, uh, he has also been working with another lobby outfit known as Camera. We've talked about Camera, mm -hmm. the Committee for Accuracy in Middle East Reporting in America. They're the mm -hmm. guys who uh, yell at the New York Times for not being Zionist enough. Yeah. Yeah. Hard They're, to please. Yeah, very impossible to please. Something would say. Oh, fuck. Um, yeah. So he, uh, you know, he was actually challenged on his framing, uh, him framing himself as like a humanitarian um, by a uh, on Twitter. And uh, in classic liberal Zionist fashion, he had this to say. How can UCL, Friends of Palestine, and will violently shut down speakers based on their race, sexuality, gender, nationality, name of liberal value, be put in the same line, let alone be the merits of your all-campus activism? Yeah, and that tortured sentence construction is his attempt to mock what UCL, Friends of Palestine Society, which was, how can IDF and humanitarian be put in the same line, let alone the same bio? Right, exactly. So he, he attempted to do something, which is a really good... Twitter format, actually, you take the construction, my brother's great at this. Yeah. You take the construction of your opponent's sentence. Yeah. And you expose the, the absurdity of that by elegantly flipping the terms, but keeping the structure and you sort of show something more clear, but he just does it in a very ham-fisted right. I mean, way. and bad faith way, because he yeah. immediately is, uh, you know, he is pivoting to this being about his uh his gender uh or his sexuality yeah. or his race like yeah. he immediately does the thing that hen loves to do uh which is get into the identity politics protection of i am a gay jew of color and therefore attacks on me are not only anti-semitic but also racist and anti-gay mm -hmm. which is of course not true do you think he was bullied in the boys bathroom for being a husbarist yeah, probably. I mean, listen, I would. <laughs> that's that's, re that's really that's really traumatic. Yeah, it's got to be hard out there, you know. It's yeah. like there should be like a. They should have their own country. I think you know they the should right have their own. They, they, sh they should have their own closet at least. Yeah, I, I agree completely. Uh, Hen has made an entire career out of using these kind of identity politics to make you know the occupation and ethnic cleansing and genocide like mm -hmm. uh, sound woke to a western mm -hmm. audience mm -hmm. 
Uh, but while some liberal Zionists do this as like a coping mechanism, he does it uh, for money. You know, like th it, that is the important thing to note here is that like he, it, this entire liberal persona is a facade. It's one mm -hmm. thing to actually believe this stuff and use it in order to justify so so that you can sleep at night. You know, and I know a lot of liberal Zionists who do this. They 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 need to have this narrative of Israel is, you know, is good for gay people. It's good for feminism. It's good for, you know, all these, you know, X, Y, Z liberal values in order to feel like this is justified. Like maybe mm -hmm. on some level, it's okay to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's not to excuse people who are doing that as a coping mechanism, especially now during, you know, this, you know, a, a genocide and a, a war crime that is um, so egregious that I feel like, you know, a hundred years from now, people will be it's gonna yeah it's gonna take a about. lot of it's gonna take a lot of yom kippurs to yes to expiate that one yes. from the book of life yeah and uh, you know so i don't <clears throat> forgive it but it's 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 just so much worse from hen because it's disingenuous like he serves at the pleasure of the far right-wing government that mm -hmm. he pretends to abhor nothing makes that more apparent uh, than his myriad of attacks on a head to Mimi. Uh, oh so, boy. Yes, yes. He oh went after a head to Mimi a lot. Um, you know, uh, when a head to Mimi was arrested in uh, 2017 for slapping uh, an IOF soldier in, you know, the very famous viral video, um, he had this to say on Twitter uh, LOL, white Palestinian arrested by black. Uh, Israeli policewoman. Yeah, delightful. Yeah, immediately making it inverting the uh, the who is oppressed narrative, mm -hmm. you know, based mm -hmm. on skin color, which mm -hmm. is like is is actually racist. <laughs> like that's the thing. Whenever people talk about like identity politics, is you know, like you know, when you talk about like black lives matter or black power people will be like that's racist and you know it's not um what he's doing there is knowingly inverting <clears throat> the power dynamic and that therefore does make what he's doing super fucking racist well this uh, is one of the this is one of the i gotta say like mm -hmm. to give the devil its due and you know we may see this slightly differently but this is one of the dangers of identity politics being at the crux of oh i completely agree with uh, that. of social yes. activism because when you decouple the language from analyzing material power yes and and put it onto <clears throat> consequential but superficial features about people yeah now anyone can take that language and co-opt it you know he can use the word intersectionality as if that means something yeah in this context all it means is I'm a lot of things. Right. Uh, and and he can play the oppression Olympics and be like, you would think that since I'm at the receiving end of all of these systems of oppression that whatever, but look, I'm not. Like, it just, it it's kind of what happens when identity politics backfires and gets used in bad faith. A hundred percent. And I've, yeah. I, I, I feel the exact same way. In fact, you know, this is... Um, the thing when he talks about like intersectionality, um, intersectionality is not when you individually say, I am this, 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 and this, That's right. and therefore in the oppression Olympics, I am uh, unimpeachable. Right. Intersectionality right. is actually what you are talking about. It's it's when you don't take a race essentialist or ethnicity essentialist view on something or class essentialist view on anything where you go like there is a myriad of factors that matter here. The society and the makeup of society in, in Israel is a factor that he completely ignores and yeah. just kind of superimposes this uh, American uh, structure of white supremacy and says there's like, a big well, overpass over that intersection the yes. highway the yes, highway of exactly. truth just goes just doesn't actually intersect <laughs> yes. with like occupation yes uh all of the all of the systems of apartheid and oppression and inequality including the Ashkenazi Mizrahi one which you know, yes. we'll probably have a guest on at some point to talk with us about but yeah you know he's he's just eliding he's he's only including these the intersecting streets that serve him 
Right, a hundred percent, and and this is the an issue that I've you know had with identity politics in general, especially in the way it's so cynically used by people, um, you know, who are Zionists, because of the fact that like they can uh, use their uh, you know the historic disenfranchisement and anti-Semitism and brutality brought upon uh, you know people doing anti-Semitism to our ancestors in order to justify something that does not compute in the same societal context. You see this- Zionism, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you oh, see this all the time yeah. with um, white Jews, uh, Ashkenazi Jews in America, where yeah. uh, you, you know, like this is one of the most disgusting features for me is one of the reasons I started like really going hard on liberal Zionists is because what I was seeing was people who said things like Black Lives Matter, who uh, who said things like stop Asian hate and who, people who I assumed were acting in solidarity <clears throat> with these groups uh, who said they wanted to dismantle white supremacy and then turn around after October 7th and use and co-opt the language of identity politics and kind of would the you rules hide me? around it. Yeah, <laughs> would you hide me and shit? Like using that kind of like um, uh, sort of victim, uh, victim forward mentality that your a lot Jewish of friends and, and yeah, victim forward also cite individual psychology. Yes, oriented. Your Jewish friends are not okay. There was a New York Times article: Why your Jewish friends are all shaking. Yes, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like it. And, yeah, I was and, like, and, if that and, sentence doesn't end with because he just had a really good orgasm, I'm gonna be <laughs> pissed, bro. <laughs> but or no. he just got out of watching Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was literally shaking after that movie. But yeah. but I've always said Zionism is the OG identity of politics. I mean, again, yes. having grown grown up in it. Yes. The, yes. the core question that our counselors and program directors were obsessed with is what is a Jew. Jewish identity, Jewish identity, Jewish identity. And as a kid, I actually didn't like this word identity. I'm like, yeah. why are you, like, my identity is mine. Why are you trying to get me to buy into some kind of consensus identity that we, and, and then what? What are we going to do with it? Oh, I see what we're going to do with it. We're right. going to use it to say that no matter what anyone else says, no matter what universal values say, and no matter what the costs are to other human beings, our identity grants us the privilege yeah. And the imperative to do what we want when we want. And you can't, it's like Eric Cartman adopting woke language. 100%. Be like, you know, yes. You know? Yeah. And, and, and I feel like that is what I saw among so many liberal Zionists uh, after the seventh people that I knew. I saw them and I, I, as, you know, kind of co-opting this, this language um, in order to use it as a cudgel against oh, yeah. these other minority groups for not immediately uh, either backing Israel or not staying silent because this is an us thing and this has nothing to do with you. Like it was very much like using the like, uh, you know, the idea of like black spaces and colleges and whatnot and how, you know, hostile that makes white people at a college. Like, oh, what the hell? It was that. It was going, why can't we do that? But for a literally existing apartheid state, as opposed to just like a fucking, uh, a wing of an administrative building yeah. in which people are like, this is gonna be a black space. It was just so clear to me that like, a lot of these people <clears throat> decided that um, when they were, you know, against white supremacy or dismantling, you know, white supremacy, they were like, well, that doesn't include me. Yeah. That I am not, an oppressor and that yeah. to me i was like oh you you are completely acting in bad faith then this is 100 percent about posturing this has yeah. nothing to do with any kind of self-reflective or, no. or you know attempt to uh better yourself and society this is about like being like well i that's not us and it completely you know ignores the white privilege that white people have like i'm sorry but white jews have white privilege and you can't yeah, do we're doing that yeah. We're doing pre we're doing pretty well. We may not always feel very secure, but our sure. feelings are not. I mean, this is where you know, Rabbi Ben Shapiro uh, mm -hmm. is actually technically right that your feelings are not facts. Except yeah. his feelings, he thinks are facts. I I'll tell you one quick story, and then maybe we could maybe we could pivot to yes, yes, please. the rest of it. Just because I've got a I've got a yeah, 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 be yeah, out yeah. in a bit. Um, 
I had, and I'm not going to name any names, but I had dinner once with a rather prominent person hmm. uh, who's prominent in various domains, including, uh, well, I don't even want, I don't even want to say it, but, Come but, on, a, a, you're well, teasing me here. There, there's, there's politics and there's other stuff, right? Okay. Th- th- this, this person is, um, and known for having a, a humanistic view and mm-hmm. for um, standing for what's right and for bucking the trend mm-hmm. and for, um, I think, being a very compassionate person. And uh, we were speaking about, I forget what was going on, but maybe there was a rise in like, there was like a 2% rise in swastikas on synagogues or there was some mean tweets from someone or there was, right. I don't know, maybe Elon Musk had just taken over Twitter. And so there was like an increase in like Groiper trolls and shit. I don't know. More like, like a, like a 10% increase in Pepe memes. All right. I forget what the provocation was. It was yeah. something. It wasn't nothing, but it wasn't the Holocaust. Right. And this person said to me like very kind of confidentially and like just shaking their head. I just can't believe it. You know, here we were, 2020, Black Lives Matter. We were there for them. This person's Jewish. We were there for them. Where are they for us right now with what we're going through? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, this is lunacy. Complete. And it's, Complete and it's nasty. It's really a kind of bedrock nastiness. And you, you start to really viscerally see what, people like Malcolm X and, and Martin Luther King spoke about when they talked about the danger of the white liberal, yes. the, the, the hostility underneath it, the contempt yes. underneath white liberalism, this expectation that you're going to see us as good. And then you're going to be on our side. Yes. And we're, and we're going to just ignore the material differences between us. Right. And all of that. In favor of this like essentialist view that, you know, if you take it to its logical end, this, you know, uh, identity essentialism uh then you can justify you know uh you you can justify this entire ethnic cleansing based on you know uh, a narrative that you have adopted in your head and you can do (laughs) you can be openly racist uh because you're like well you know uh technically my identity has been more historically uh, marginalized in yours, even though the context of America, that is absolutely not the case. You can't say yeah. to a black guy, well, you know, I'm Jewish, so I know a thing or two about uh, systemic uh, violence and, uh, you know, being oppressed. It's like the history of Jewish oppress- oppression in Europe is vast and horrifying and terrible. But do you but- know how many country clubs we didn't get to join, Matt? Oh, in America? I mean, listen, most of us, we had to like start our own. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking bullshit well let's and let's not and let's not be total dicks about it of no, course no, there's of course. been persecution of jews in the states there's been yes. targeting there's been anti-semitic incidents there's, there's been massacres there's yes. been lynchings yes it happened no, of course and there's no there's 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 no disputing that there is uh there continues to be anti-semitism in the united states and people who do not do not like jews and uh that made the question, to, made to order by israel actually well in a lot of cases yes uh, it, and it's but the the question is is whether or not that um, the existence of anti-Semitism, uh, you know, is w- whether or not it is OK to put that up against the uh, existence of different forms of discrimination, racism, mm-hmm. sexism, uh, homophobia, and use that to uh, to uphold and fortify a, an apartheid state in thousands of miles away it's like a well, completely it's completely disconnected from the reality i don't know about that matt Co- kogad actually launched an internal investigation of that question mm. and they found out that actually it is okay to conflate those things and that oh, it's, thank uh, God. it's perfectly sensible and it's actually good for palestinians too and it's human it's the humani- humanitarian approach so yes who are we going to believe a podcaster in la or like um the army they are unit yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that is what Hen does. And uh, it is, I think what I loved about watching him and Owen talk, uh, the debate was watching his entire thing fall apart mm-hmm. uh, amidst an onslaught of 
indisputable facts from Owen about what's happening in Gaza and what and everything that we've been seeing with our eyes for the last six months. And it mm-hmm. reminds me, it, it, as I watched it, I thought of your video, Daniel. Mm. And um, I, I want to play a little bit of it for you here because it is just, it's so good. Um, Thanks. And I, I, I'll let you, you know, uh, s- s- comment on it because I, I'm not going to yeah. play the whole thing. Um, but uh, it is... Yeah, it's perfect, so I'm gonna play it for you right now. I made a video a few months ago talking about how the door only swings one way. And I was speaking to Zionist Jews in the mainstream Jewish community who are alarmed about some of their friends and families and the direction they're taking, turning against Israel and standing up for Palestinian rights and wondering what's going on. And I said, you're going to have to get your head around the fact that you've lost these people because the door only swings one way. It doesn't go in the opposite direction. If you've been attached to Israel as a Jewish state and thinking that its actions are justified and seeing Israeli Jews as the victims of the Palestinians, and then you actually learn about a different point of view you were never taught. Once that point of view gets you, you're got. You can't go back, you can't unsee it. It doesn't work in the opposite direction because that's called waking up out of chauvinist illusions. It just works in that one direction. And I've been thinking about what it must be like now in April, all these months later, I mean, that was in December. A lot's changed since then, actually. For a lot of us who are watching these horrors, if you don't want to call it a genocide, that's up to you. That's fine. I don't care what you call it. Actually, I mean, it is one. But if you don't want to call it that, then I would say, okay, well, how many rungs down the ladder of atrocity is it? Is it like one step removed from genocide? Is it two step removed? Three steps? How close to genocide are you comfortable being on the side of? Whatever it is, it ain't good. And there's more and more evidence that it's at least very plausibly somewhere up there in that top tier of horrible things we would never want to be associated with. And more and more of the world sees it that way. And that's what I've been thinking about. What must it be like at this stage to still be clinging to the idea that Israel's the victim? To still be hoping to convince the world of that view? It's got to be really painful. I think it must be sinking in at this point. In the, in the wake of the killings, what the consensus seems to be, no matter what the Israeli army's internal self-investigation says, were deliberate deliberate, targeted killings, pretty systematic, whatever you think of the deliberateness, they seems to have been pretty systematic, killings of the world's central kitchen aid workers, the bombing of the Iranian embassy in Damascus, a whole lot of just madness on Israel's part, just kind of a lot of going rogue and doing things that are very hard to explain or defend. So I want to, I want to talk to you a bit about uh, what you said there about like, Mm -hmm. it must be very painful. Yeah. And this is something that I've been thinking a lot about. Um, in, I, I just, I love the framing of it because, uh, sometimes I find myself being, you know, so full of resentment, uh, mm-hmm. regarding <clears throat> some of the people that I know who, you know, uh, both people I know and don't know, obviously, uh, who um, continue to this very day to defend these actions. And some who uh, seem to have just doubled down. <clears throat> and watching that video, it, it just it filled me finally with like just a, a feeling of, um, I don't know, relief. Like I took a breath. And I was just like, yeah, you know, it's just, it's at this point, 
it's just so clear. We see the narrative yep. that Israel has constructed fall apart. And 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 yep. that, you know, the the reality start being acknowledged. And mm -hmm. watching people's doubling down, not as a manifestation of just like spite necessarily or like evil, but as a manifestation of their just pain. They're they're mm -hmm. they're clinging on to this this narrative because they can't they can't handle the realities like yeah. speak more on that please well i'm i'm thank you for all that i mean my favorite feedback i get is that people tell me that some of these videos i make help them breathe you know and, and yeah hopefully you know if i can offer anything it's to say things that need to be said but aren't being said um I wrote a song back in 1997 during one of my last summers working at one of these Zionist summer camps. I was back then like a singer songwriter with a guitar trying to be the male Ani DeFranco, but I didn't have the balls. Uh, and um, <laughs> I didn't have the ovaries. Yeah. Um, and it was in reaction to this reaction I got from fellow counselors after I had included about two minutes of Nakba content without even using the word Nakba. I used the mm -hmm. word catastrophe. <clears throat> but into one of these typical special days where we would role play the creation of the state of Israel. And I insisted that we give a couple of minutes just to let the kids know there's another version of this story. And I played a Palestinian unnamed who in 1948 says to everyone gathered at the whatever, at the independence day celebration, mm -hmm something else happened here that you don't know about. And either you're going to want to know about it or you're not going to want to know about it. But if you don't want to know about it, it's, it's not going to go away. It's going to come back to bite you. We're not going away. We're not going to forget this. And your national day of victory is our national day of catastrophe. And I thought it was pretty powerful. And the kids seemed to like, I, I thought it was like a healthy thing. If you're going to do a Zionist day, at least fucking like. Be honest. At least draw. Be, yeah. Like, just to be honest about it. Like. There's something else that happened here that has consequence. That's as far as I could go at that point. Right. I've gone much, much further than that since then. Mm -hmm. um, but there was only so far you could go within that context. But anyway, that was still pretty radical within this left-wing progressive thing. I, I got back to the um, the counselor's lounge and there scrawled on the whiteboard immediately was someone had written, Yom Ha'atzma'ut, our national day of quote-unquote catastrophe this sarcastic thing basically being like, I ruined everyone's good time. And I wrote this song called No Matter How You Will It, which is a play on Herzl. Herzl's If You Will It, It Is No Dream. And right. I'll just tell you the sort of opening lyrics because they speak exactly to what you're saying here. And I was observing it back then because I could hear it in their voices and just the, 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 the blistering rage and, 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 and perplexity and, and, and hostility at me for ruining their illusion. And the lyrics yeah. were, you can feel it crumbling, your hold on what you've known and what you've needed to be true. And now I see you stumbling through sentences that break apart and reveal the rift inside of you. Because no matter how you will it, it's still a dream if you can't face reality for what it is and what it always was. And you could try to kill it, and justify your blindness, but it's going to come up from behind you, and I don't think I want to be there when it does. And then the bars, the chorus, bro. Yeah, bars. Yeah, bars. And the, the, the chorus was, and you know, because the truth is is yours, but sorry, because because your view is yours, but the truth is not, and it won't bend to think everything you were taught. Jesus. Yeah, it won't bend to fit everything you were taught. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so it's this psychological thing that was really evident to me back in that environment because we were held together by this web of shared illusions and a shared lore yeah. and a shared mythos that that says this is the thing we get to celebrate uncomplicatedly and then we can deal with the the issues but don't make us go back and 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 face the fundamental um weakness of the premises on which our whole worldview is based and it reminds me of that axel rose lyric i've worked too hard for my illusions just to throw them all away mm. and and people get so invested in the stories that give them a sense of meaning and purpose and belonging and zionism has been that it's an emotional addiction yeah. and um so what we're seeing now is you know the 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 drug pushers of that of that dope 
uh, doubling down and trying to, you know, make, you know, basically like in the wire, give it, you know, new, new names, yellow caps, blue mm-hmm. caps, pretend that it's the raw, but it's some stepped on shit. And it's, it's yeah. just not, it's just not get, it's not hooking people. And those who it, are hooked on it are just not getting the same raw hit from it anymore because the same because high. reality yeah reality is closing in on them and the walls of the crack house are crumbling and i'm just gonna stop that metaphor right there but no i mean I, to continue it you know the fucking there's some people who you just wonder what the od is gonna look like you know yeah. you just because at some point the od is just pivoting to full-on fascism and you've seen that you know oh, sure. obviously among you know, in Israeli society and uh, and in, you know, kind of more uh, conservative Zionist circles, you know, well, people this is the thing, proudly because, Zionist. Yeah, fascism is the obliteration of mixed feelings, isn't it? Mm, yeah. So it's the perfect, it's one very ready um, and quick fix solution for shit is getting uncomfortable. Yeah. The contradictions are getting to be too much. Okay, let's just eliminate the contradictions. Right, kill and it. And say... Like in your wonderful little sketch, I'm bad now. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 then you adopt all the other things that you need to adopt to justify that, which is, well, the world's against us and it's only us and we can only rely on ourselves and fuck it. You know, fuck the world, don't ask me for shit. Um, yeah. The other, con- the other thing is much more human, but it's scary to contemplate, which is to feel the feelings that you've been keeping at bay, which might include guilt, shame, horror, mm-hmm. regret grief fear yeah. the fear of not being the, the fear of the fact that this jewish state has not kept us safe and nothing will ultimately ever completely inoculate us or ensure us against persecution because there's there is no people that can yeah america is not going to be safe for americans are not going to be safe forever from the consequences of what america's done absolutely and yeah. if we read the bible i think you know the, the bible we claim to use as our uh, as our passport reali- <laughs> our passport and our and our real estate claim guide uh-huh. um there's there's all kinds of scripture that says don't put your faith in armies don't put your faith in nations you know that's just not where it's at in terms of real security yeah 100 percent. and i think the, you know for the people you know who <clears throat> have now had the opportunity to use this, you know, identity politics based argument in order to like, to justify every single action because they go, well, I mean, you know, yeah, sure. Israel's bad and right wing and stuff, but you know, have you seen the Arabs or whatnot? Um, It's gone to the point where there is no, there's whatever thing you're going to make up in your head about how Arabs or Palestinians are worse Mm -hmm. than, than Israelis. um, At this point, there's no, there's nothing comforting about making that because you, because one is imaginary and one is happening. That's right. And uh, Alon Mizrahi, who I know is someone that we, Oh, we will have on very soon. We're going to have on. Yeah. Um, Has a great tweet. I can't find it right now, but I was looking at it earlier mm-hmm. where he basically says that you can only say that Israel is some kind of beacon of Western values if you segment what Israel actually is into into these different parts. Yes. You know, 48 Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, all this. But Israel functionally is the whole fucking Megillah. Yes. It's the whole thing. And you cannot separate these things. They're intricately linked. So the fact that some people enjoy um, a, 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 a something that looks like a European lifestyle with some racism in it, <laughs> in, in one segment of that, does not wash. And if you yeah. look at the whole thing, he says, then Israel is by far the most tyrannical and brutal regime in the neighborhood, maybe he says accepting Syria because he's not sure what's going on there right now or, or who's ruling it. <laughs> yeah. But he makes that, and Alon is a, a, you know, Israeli Jew. That's right. An Ar- Arab Israeli Jew. So, um, it, yeah, they can't rest on that anymore. It's just yeah. with and every passing day, it's, of course it's got to be painful. Yeah. And, and you know, I like to take the piss and, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, 
Such a weird expression. Like, we love taking piss. You yeah. know, <laughs> I like to couple, give it. I like to take it. We're a couple of piss pigs over here. <laughs> <laughs> give me more. Uh, <laughs> give me that. Yeah. Um, give, me that. <laughs> give me that piss. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I think a little targeted cathartic cruelty towards these. Oh, sure. Propaganda swine like like Hen Mazig and the others like that because it is we're 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 trying to do propaganda and the other counter propaganda we're trying to give antioxidants but mm. at the very same time I think having at least for us in the Jewish community I don't necessarily recommend or prescribe to a Palestinian that they should feel any ounce of compassion for any Israeli at this moment that's I, not their job yeah but our jobs if you really want to get inside the heads of your opponent. The, well, the person you're opposing and even hope to seduce them back from the dark side or court mm -hmm. them back from the dark side. You got to have some compassion for what they're going through. Look at what Luke had to do with his own father. I feel the conflict in you. Let go of your hate. You yeah. know, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop dragging you on Twitter. I get yeah. way too much validation for it. And I'm an insecure Ashkenazi Jew just like you. So of course I'm going to do that. But also yeah. you deserve it because you're fucking supporting a genocide. But at the same time, if we can start to notice these cracks in their foundation, there, there, you know, there may be breakthroughs on the way. Yeah, the hope is that there is because you know at some point, uh, Passover is real close. <laughs> so, and why is this seder different from all other seders? That's the question I think for yeah, all of us. Yeah. Really, like why is this year different? Uh, the, I think for me it's because uh, uh, I don't know which ones I'm going to be invited to. Uh, yeah, right, <laughs> but uh, Daniel, thank you so much for that video, and mm. uh, thank you so much for your uh, your intellect and your compassion, and for being the sometimes co-host of Bad Has Bara. I love him. I'm really in, I'm I love being had, and I uh, and I wouldn't want to be had by anyone but you. And I love that it's happening more frequently and more regularly because you're giving me advance notice, and I'm not traveling so much. So yeah, yeah. Let's keep it going, my friend. Let's keep it going. Yeah, and uh, you know until the wheels fall off. Exactly until we are finally <sighs> targeted strike down. <laughs> Uh, who knows? No, we'll you be mean fine. like a YouTube copyright strike? Right? Yeah, yeah, it's copyright strike. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, like yeah. a drone that. Knock but, on wood. Uh, no, knock, knock, knock. Uh, but uh, real quick, where can people find you? Uh, plugs, anything you want to shout out before you go? DanielMate dot com, walkwithdaniel dot com, and at Daniel B Mate on both Twitter slash X and Instagram. Hell and yeah! I never, I don't use Facebook anymore. So yeah. But follow Don't. all those. He's a great follow, great guy. And uh, thank you to everyone out there who continues to listen to this podcast. Uh, we love you all. Uh, that's a beautiful watermelon you got there. It's a watermelon stress ball. Someone gave it to me in Ireland. It's really great. I love it. I get to squeeze uh, Palestine and, and yeah, in a loving way. You know? In a loving way. It's a hug with five fingers. Uh Yes, so please go to patreon.com slash badhasbar, support this podcast, uh, help free up more time in both of our lives. Listen, if we can if we can just do this, I think we'd both be very happy. <laughs> so please uh, donate and uh, or subscribe. And uh, yeah, uh, badhasbara at gmail.com for all your questions, comments, and concerns. All right, everyone, that's been our podcast. And until next time, from the river to the sea. Oh. All praises due to G.O.D. Hell yeah, thank you. Save me on that one, bro. Jumping jacks was us. Push-ups was us. Krav Maga, us. All